Uh, to artist in recovery. Morning, Daryl. Yeah, we were Gen C, West Coast. Rosamond, California. The zombie out here is not alive and not awake yet. It's only 5.40 in the morning. Sunday, the 19th of May, 2024. <coughs> and how am I feeling this morning? I'm still waking up. Yeah, I guess some people don't want to talk about recovery as much. And if they do, they think it's full of crap. How many times we kept coming across that story? Even in the meeting halls, we've heard uh, our fair share, haven't we? Fair share of people think the program is full of crap. But the thing is, when you go into the meeting halls, you know you're licked. Because... You get the damn disease knocking on your doorstep and screwing around with your damn head and gets to the point where you're getting beyond sick and tired, sick and tired, and then being sick and tired of being sick and tired. I mean, it was just an ultimate level right there. You're recommended one way or another, and you end up in the halls, and you're wondering what the hell you're doing there in the first place. And some people actually used it for a game. When my brother became, well, actually when he realized he had an issue, an issue shit, worse than that, he was an addict alcoholic, but he couldn't recognize it to himself until he had to face death himself, or being cheated of it. Three days in the nut hut, and he comes back home, he's a dead skeleton. I mean, he looked like, worse than anything I'd see my brother go through. Ma was going through a 12-step recovery program at the time, regarding overeating. Our readers anonymous. Use food as a way of coping, much like we use alcohol and drugs doing the same thing. I mean, I'm in total denial there in those days. I'm fine. Everyone else is nuts. I had a hell am I supposed to be dealing with my own damn issues? Nobody else gives a shit about my issues, so screw it subconscious thinking right there so Dave begins his journey of recovery he gets introduced by people because Ma talked about him to other people got responses got a phone number to help him out not gonna be a sponsor but it's gonna help him out my brother shows up a few days on his own and begins his journey, but he also doesn't take the program seriously enough. 30 day marijuana maintenance help. He'll be. He'll stay away from the booze, but he won't stay away from the joint. That's what he did to himself. <coughs> that was the hardest damn thing. No, no, no. The hardest thing for him to do was admit that he actually had the problem. He'll talk about the damn thing, but the problem is. In the programs, in some of the halls, they had this tradition. Sit down, shut up, and listen because you don't know your ass from a hall on a rock. You don't know what's going on. So that's what happened. You sit down, shut up, and try to absorb for so long. That's what he did. And after the end of 30 days, it was getting to him because he was starting to develop a conscious. Maybe God was trying to knock on his doorstep and say, uh, remember me that you pleaded for help and uh, you wanted to help, so I'm here to provide it, but the problem is you're not getting it. So maybe you got to admit to yourself that you've got a real issue here. I don't know what the uh, aha moment was, but apparently my brother got it because after 30 days, he turned his 30-day uh, chip in and got another first day because he's starting day one all over again he was doing the marijuana maintenance but he wasn't drinking he really wasn't working his program <laughs> he's trying to become honest about it his recovery date was the 19th I think October 19th what was it no I took it back. It was September 18th. He should have been uh, starting it up in August, but he didn't. He moved his date back to September 18th, 1985. And he worked.
embarked on a 32-year clean and sober route. And me, not giving a shit about this thing, but I have to keep an eye on him. I really could care less about it. <laughs> I bring books with me to hide from people left and right. Oh, sure, I'll do the prayer and do the mantra, but it really didn't matter to me as much. At least not at first. I really didn't. Hold on. Copy your weights. Continuation on the log. Go to me coffee. One of the staples that they have in the meeting halls is sometimes you provide your own tea, but if you had your own tea bags, yeah, and other places would supply the drinking supplies, as in condiments, sugar, creamer, but not coffee because we do coffee. Instead of drinking alcohol, we're getting in sugar intake. Sugar intake is the replacement to the alcohol, the pure grain alcohol turns into the strongest glucose molecule ever, interferes with the pleasure brain, and screws us over left and right. Overeaters go for the food because it's complex and sometimes simple sugars that still affect our pleasure center and also affects our metabolism, God knows what, everything else. I've seen that firsthand, and I've also seen it in my mother. So much stuff to go through <laughs> but as we're calling out someone's recovery saying that you can't say it out and loud I'm saying where the hell have you been now over the past I don't know why I'm 58 years old yeah I think it's about 80s and 90s they started advertising more and more of the Alcoholics Anonymous but through them they would have different phone numbers for different support groups because through Alcoholics Anonymous or other people out there who utilize the program for life support and basically to live. I know, because my family was. I used to, I used that term was because they're no longer part of the living. I am a survivor. Sucks. I do my channel of the Diary of the Griever named John Weaver because I talk about my own emotional situations going on. Triggers, uh, events that are affecting me a great deal, and usually I used it as a life support. But if I talk about recovery, it's because I've got a message to say to the person who's still suffering. There is hope out there, and it takes a lot of work and a lot of effort to keep you alive. Well, granted, I'm not guaranteeing or saying anything about if you're going to be happy for the rest of your life. No, because you deal with life on life's terms. Now, to the recovery buddy I've got out there on the East Coast, he talks about his stuff all the time. Well, when he can, <laughs> triggered one way or another. And it's important for us to keep sharing our experience, strength, and hope. I know when you keep going to the meeting halls and you keep sharing the stuff, it's getting old and boring. But the problem is, well, it's not for the old timers as much, it's for the new people to pop in. We tell our stories to show them, to demonstrate that we're willing to commit to our recovery of whatever we're recovering from, whether it be food addiction, drug addiction, alcohol addiction, or video game addiction, sex addiction. There are levels out there. There are, there are forms of it out there. Very destructive behavior that'll put us into a path of destruction. And we've been through that too many damn times. And some of us had to go through it before we got into the halls. We had to be completely devastated sometimes. I've seen it. I've seen how people were completely devastated going through the halls and not and really admitting to themselves they had a problem. It's not the easiest damn thing to admit to. It really, really isn't. Someone's got to approach you in an angle and talk to you about some things that they've noticed. Uh, a caring friend, relative, even a stranger will say something like that. A stranger, get your head chewed off. But 
sometimes you need to hear a stranger's voice to let you know what's going on. I know some people don't think it's appropriate for the anonymous portion to be out there. The problem is it's no longer anonymous. We start talking about our own recovery on camera. I said before about 80s or 90s, something like that. When we have people actually admit that they have an issue over a situation, actually they have a problem that they uh, are having an issue with. A lot of famous people and a lot of in, and a lot of no famous people are suffering through the damn thing. I said before when I came into the program, I was skeptical. But also, I was thinking, like, well, this is my business, but I just want to, I'm here for my brother. I'm here to give him moral support. Just leave me the fuck alone. You know, my ma sent me over here, okay? She wanted me to keep an eye on him. I'm keeping an eye on him. She wanted me out of the house. She didn't trust him as much. <laughs> she didn't trust him. Not at first. It's only when he had about a few years of sobriety that she really began to trust him. That he was really showing that he was part of the family. But I still had to go with him. Now, I admit there have been times that I wanted to get out of the house away from Ma. Why not use that as an excuse to go out? And certain nights, we would go to meetings in different places. But I really wasn't connecting with these guys and sometimes there was a level I wish I was one of them which will think it got me in there that's for damn sure no it did actually because I kept saying these people had a relationship a connection these people had something that I didn't have I didn't know what the hell it was but I still didn't want to have anything to do with them I got this push pull thing going on this damn game in my head Am I or am I not relating to you guys was my issue. I don't want to be poked and prodded in a damn thing, so stop pushing this shit down my throat, but I'm here to support my brother. Make sure he doesn't go through this damn shit. There's nothing wrong with me. Leave me the hell alone. Or, quite frankly, leave me the fuck alone, all right? I had an attitude like that. I had the attitude of denial. There's nothing worse than having an attitude of denial that nothing's affecting you and you're all right. Despite the fact you're going splat. That's how it is. I don't have a problem. Give me some more money so I can get my problem fixed. I was looking for the damn money. I was making the damn money, but also had an attitude of losing jobs left and right. What the fuck was I doing? I'm struggling. I'm trying to make these guys happy, but also I'm trying to do the things that make me happy. But I'm here to earn a damn job. What's wrong with that? If you leave me alone, I can do the damn job. I see there was a problem over there. I wanted to fix it, but you know, you don't want me to do that it because it's part of your culture. But you hired me over here. Now what do you want me to do? I don't get it with you assholes. What do you want from me? At home, I had the same attitude. At work, I was losing jobs. I wasn't fitting in anywhere. I see these people laughing their heads off at the time in meeting halls. Like, what the fuck's their major malfunction? They're laughing. They they connect with something. What the fuck am I? Chop liver? I want to be part of it, but I don't want to be part of it. How do you reconcile that shit? I kept thinking about that one, too. I kept thinking about that one sometimes. How do you identify? How do I identify? I got a problem? I don't have a fucking problem. You guys got the problem. But I like what you got. I want to be part. I want to be in. But I like an outside. How the hell do I connect with you assholes? And quite frankly, here's the thing about the program. The people also go in there are also part of the um, a subset, if you will, if you will. 
Try this one. Alanon. Alatine. Naranon. You have family members, you have friends, you have people, co-workers, and, who are affected by the people of the alcoholic. People of the alcoholic held are affected by the alcoholic's period. And if they're recovering, they need a support group. But the thing is, you've got to understand what the support group's all about. You've got to go through the uh, programs to identify and help or, or not help or just be there for supportive. You can talk about your own damn issues, what you have regarding and relating to the problem, or you may be a different problem altogether, but you're still able to relate. And if you're still having problems with the person suffering through the, through the damn disease, we called it in the, in the halls, it manifests one way or another. The addictive, compulsive, destructive, narcissistic behavior. It's all about you, don't you understand that? I'm the most important person around. Why is everything happening to me? I'm, I'm not a bad guy. I just have to do it my way, that's all. Give me that damn bottle. Give me that drug. Give me that. Give me that. Give me that. What? You're not going to give me that? What's with you? Who the hell do you think you are? Who do you think you're dealing with here? I'm me. You're you. So give me that damn stuff. Man. I'm all right. I'm fine. You're not fine. What am I dealing with you? I just want more to stuff. Bad enough going on drive through drugs for my brother. Different areas that we would go into. And I had to be his lookout just to keep his ass protected from Ma and from the cops. And we go home broker than shit after about 10, 20 bucks for a couple of hits, I think. But it was just dime bags. You know, it made me feel like a piece of shit during those days. I really did. Because I didn't understand the damn disease. All I saw was my brother doing this damn shit. Did I understand the cause? No, because I understand my brother was doing this shit. He couldn't stop himself. Had to lie in front of Ma. So yeah, blamed everything else on him for a long while on that one. And it was. It was also the damn disease doing this shit. But you still had to be responsible, accountable, and transparent about the damn shit. You had to be accountable. You had to be cash office, cash register honest, they called it. You don't want to understand that one? If you worked in retail, you probably would understand about balancing a damn register. Okay, let's just say that you have a register opening up. It's got about a certain amount of money. Your basis. You're making transactions. You're either piling it in or you're screwing it up one way or another. But in the end, you come up with a balance. And if it's not tallying with what the receipts are supposed to be, then you're not honest with it. You get reports written up in companies for that one. People get fired for that one, for not balancing a register. I know, I know. Been there, done that. And a register doesn't lie, especially when it can't balance with the receipts. If, you're re if you've been in retail, you understand. If you hadn't been in retail, well, then you either got shortchanged or you got over or you got overchanged. But the cashier has to suffer through that shit. The cashier, the addict alcoholic, and whatever kind of suffering thing he's going through, he's got to be, or she, or whoever, has got to be honest with themselves. Got to be balancing it every single time there's a transaction. A transaction would be like something of a behavioral response or something else going on in their life. How many times have I fucked up that one? Reality speaking of a register, but also personally. <coughs> I'm screwing around with myself on that one like crazy and ended up FUBAR. How was I... Balancing my self act. I kept wondering and pleading if I was going to be a part of these guys, but I still can't. Because I have to admit that I'm one of them, and I'm not one of them. I'm not one of them. I'm not one of them. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, you can't do that to me. No! I'm not one of them. 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 I
happened to you guys? Meow. And you know what the hard part is? You admit that you got the problem. And you feel lower that you got your shit, you know, you got shortchanged. Why are you doing this? Why is somebody else? It's their problem, not mine. Why is it mine? Because it is. Doesn't make sense. Never does. You don't understand about being born into the damn stuff or dealing with the stuff. It's just the hardest damn thing to look at yourself in the mirror and you're seeing it and you don't even want to acknowledge that you got the issue. It's humiliating. It's humbling. It's mortifying. It's terrifying. You got to be honest with yourself. My God, how can you be that way? How dare you? That's what kind of thoughts going through your head. I got a problem. Everyone else has got a problem. Leave me fuck alone. I just want. I just want. I just want. I want to be part of you guys, but I'm not part of you guys. I want to be part of God, but I'm not part of God. How the hell do I tr justify myself in front of God? And what is this damn God thing? The hell has he done with me or for me or anything else for that matter? Who the hell does he think he is next to me, the ego? You think it's easy talking about this shit to other strangers? You think it's easy to going up in front of a podium or let alone raise your hand and say, I'm John, I identify. I identify myself as having this kind of an issue over here because I don't think I am, but I am. And I'm a newcomer. But I don't want to be a newcomer. I've been here so, so many damn times. Why am I identifying with this damn problem? Why am I identifying with this thing? I don't have the problem. You have the problem. So leave me the fuck alone. I'm jealous, I'm envious, I want what you have, but I don't want it because I have to be like you guys. How does this work? What do you think I was going through all this damn time? It took me years before I even admit I was an alcoholic. You're even alcoholic like-minded. I didn't remember the damn drinking, but I know I had the attitude for it and I was going to be killing myself one way or another. And I damn near killed myself. It was one decision, one major decision, a slight thought in the head. If I wasn't listening to it, I would have been out in the street, and I would have been part of an obituary. And I wouldn't care about what happened to Ma, and I wouldn't care what happened to the dogs or my brother. I wasn't about to face myself like that. I wasn't about to face that way. Everything collapsing and everything depended upon me, me, me. When well, that day came, it could have been a hell of a lot worse. It should have been a hell of a lot worse. It could have been a hell of a lot worse. It wasn't a lot worse. But it might as well have been. And if I happen to start dealing out the details, Google and YouTube will pull me because I get that graphic about it. And yeah, the stuff I shared in holes. October 10th, 2006. My date. Might as well call it my date to have my head pulled out of my ass. Nobody wants to admit it to themselves. Nobody wants to admit it to themselves that they got a problem. Or let alone having a way to fix it. You talking about social isolation? I, I isolated right in front of them. In front of me, in front of Ma, in front of Dave, in front of everybody. just wanted to belong to something, but I didn't feel like I belonged to something. I really didn't. 
you played the head game so long, you don't even <clears throat> you don't even know realities anymore. Oh, I can look at reality of my myself right now. I got fingernails growing. I got white scabby things I keep scraping off my damn skin here. Hardened skin, so I know I've got that reality check here. But when it comes down for my own behavior, my own thought patterns, my own self destructive, narcissistic, egotistical ways, what the hell? I think I know better than you. I think I'm better than you. But what are you doing to me? I keep seeing some of these people sticking their hands out, sticking their hands out, sticking their hands out, sticking their hands out, sticking their hands out. Stick in the hands out. Come on. Take them. I keep looking. I'm like, what the fuck do you want from me? We all want to help. I know there's certain things I could have said. In a, uh, what was that? Uh, Oliver Phineas way when he was doing the musical Scrooge. Take you and fennel. Recovery with you. Bombug. I could do that anyway. The thing is, what the people couldn't understand about recovery is you really had to be cash office register with it. You really had to be upfront and personal. You had to be transparent about a lot of things in the meeting hall. Mainly, you had to be transparent to yourself and to a force that hopefully is overseeing you. The first thing to admit is you're powerless. You have to be powerless. So, I had a video on this one. 